Hello everyone, welcome to review time. Remember this video? Well, that was actually for a college assignment and it failed because it wasn't critical enough. So uh, today I'm going to make a similar video, less editing, but similar nonetheless, uh, about Hogwarts Legacy. I hope you enjoy. Hogwarts Legacy is the best game I've ever listened to. Never before have I truly appreciated the art of mic eating as much as I do now. Every voice in Hogwarts Legacy is treated completely sensibly, with no strange pitching artifacts or time compression of any sort. Just kidding, that aspect of the game was taken about as seriously as you take the terms and conditions. Hogwarts Legacy is an open world action RPG. Other games in this genre include Elden Ring, Cyberpunk 2077, Valheim, and many more. Despite being in the same genre, all of these games are so different. In this video, I'm primarily going to compare Hogwarts Legacy to Elden Ring, one of my favorites of all time. There is one big audio convention in the open world or action RPG genre. There must be a sound for everything. A sub-convention of that is that fictional sounds must be believable, and Hogwarts Legacy does this actually very well. The sound effect and Foley selection during fights in Hogwarts Legacy is rich, immersive, and well recorded. It doesn't feel like they skimped out on it, unlike a certain other aspect of the audio. Even with the basic cast, there are subtle pitch and parameter randomizations each time it is used, which makes using it addictive and satisfying. However, with some sounds, like when you pick up a cosmetic item off the floor, it's the same each time, which can become quite obvious. Carrying the trend, the same can be said for some UI sounds. At the start, when you're customizing your character and flying through the menus, the same whoosh sound can be heard many times in rapid succession, without any variation or delay to let the sound fully play out. It's a bit jarring. In contrast, Elden Ring menus allow the sounds to fully finish before letting you click through to the next menu. The music, on the other hand, is beautiful. It stays faithful to the quality of the original Harry Potter films, and in terms of the composition, I have zero complaints. During fight scenes, more intense music plays, and instead of cutting it instantly as the fight ends, it waits until it can finish on the beat. The loop points are seamless, and I have never noticed them. In this domain, Hogwarts Legacy even performs better than Elden Ring, where the music just fades out when you finish a fight. Any ambience is treated fairly similarly in both games, so I won't comment too much on it. It's straightforward, fades out appropriately between locations, and never takes you out of the experience. Use of distance attenuation is similar too. In general, the sounds in Hogwarts Legacy are much more present and in your face, a decision that can pass as a stylistic choice for sound effects and foley, but not so much for the last thing I wanted to talk about. This brings me to my biggest gripe with Hogwarts Legacy, the dialogue audio. There are moments where the dialogue is artificially stretched to fit with the animations. Nobody is talking about this. It occurs more often during the beginning of the game, particularly around the part where you meet Professor Weasley for the first time. I noticed her dialogue speeding up in an unnatural way, akin to the audio warping functions of Ableton Live or Pro Tools. It sounds like the dialogue was treated by someone who has limited experience working with dialogue or even audio itself. Additionally, due to the nature of the recording process, it sounds like the characters are speaking at each other rather than to each other. A byproduct of what sounds like separate takes for each line as opposed to having the voice actors actually converse while recording the dialogue. Most of the dialogue in the game sounds weirdly up close and in your face. This is primarily due to the overuse of the proximity effect. With Hogwarts Legacy's dialogue, there's no sense of distance or depth, an essential component of immersive audio for, vid for video games. Although the dialogue sounds disconnected from the game and is rather immersion breaking, it could have been easily fixed had the proximity effect been considered during the recording process. Although the best solution would be to get the recordings right in the first place, a simple makeshift solution would be to use the sit would be to use some post-processing effects to give the voices the appropriate depth and distance. To finish off this point about dialogue audio, I would like you to hear the difference between Hogwarts Legacy and Cyberpunk 2077 in this department. Play by play though? Really, Doc? Makes you sound like a dentist. Always going on and on. Don't be mean now. Remember, I'm old. I got a shaky Gannick hand. Could slip. I trust your first classes went well? They did, Professor. I heard as much from Professors Hecate and Ronan. Complications. Complications? It seems the goblin Enough. problem has... Enough! Goblins! I've no time for rumors, Fig, and I'm rapidly losing whatever patience I had left. If you're lucky, we might still be able to get you sorted this evening. I don't know about you, but in my opinion, it's so much more immersive in Cyberpunk. The dialogue actually sounds right in its place. So overall, the sounds in Hogwarts Legacy are generally okay, but inconsistent. I'm not a fan of the stylistic choice to make everything up close and in your face, and I think it leads to some big problems, some being simply immersion breaking, like with the dialogue as I just explained. I like the decision to let music fully play out and end on the beat, but that's the only thing that was particularly notable in my opinion. Using Anthony Fantano's scale, I'm feeling a strong five on this one. 